I start off by ripping and cross cutting the front and back panels here at the table saw. For this project I use half inch and quarter inch plywood. This is a template that I made that has a three quarter inch radius curve on it. I'm using it to mark the front and back panel uh, because they both have a three quarter inch radius arch on the top corners. I head over to the bandsaw to remove a majority of the waste. And with some double sided tape, I stuck the template down to the front and back panels and use a flush trim bit to get an exact copy. I use this template for both sides. I just pop the tape off, flip the template over, and tape it down to the right side of the board and do the same cut. I'm striking a line one inch in from the edge all the way around three sides. Uh, this is going to help me determine where the screen is actually going to go so that I can then use a jigsaw to cut that excess out. And for this measurement, I drew a line six inches from the top that will meet the bottom of the screen. Since I'm using a jigsaw, I went ahead and drilled four half inch holes for the blade to fit in to start the cuts. I just wanted to note that the blade that I use is a more aggressive blade, so I did get some tear out, but it's not a concern of mine because I ended up using veneer to cover the outside of the box, which hid all the, the tear out. Now, one thing about this uh, using a jigsaw is the lines are not straight, they're, uh, they're crooked. So one thing that I did to fix this was to put some uh, scrap plywood down that have straight edges on them. I uh, butted it right up against my line that I know will give me a straight cut. And I used the combination square to make sure that it was you know, 90 degrees to the edge of the board. And then I took it over to the router table and used a, a flush trim bit that referenced these straight edges and gave me some nice clean edges on the inside of this panel. And I was pretty happy with the outcome of it. And I have some stops set up here at the router table also now because I'm using a three quarter inch straight bit to put the grooves in the front of the panel that you see that the, uh, the cloth is behind. Since this is going all the way through the panel which is a half inch thick, I took this in two passes. As you can see here, this is the second pass and the blade is up roughly a little over half of an inch to go all the way through the board. I push the fence back an inch and I repeat the cut for the second groove. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, next time I'll probably choose a, a spiral bit instead of this straight bit to get a cleaner cut. Uh, so now I'm putting a quarter inch rabbit um, all the way around on the front panel and just three sides on the back panel. The bottom of the back panel does not receive the rabbit. And before we start to assemble this box, I went ahead and cut an opening on the back panel that I'm going to put a door in for easy access of the inside of the cabinet. And for this project, uh, this is a 10 inch LCD screen that I picked up from Amazon that worked perfect for this project. The quality of the screen is, uh, is awesome as well. The games look amazing on it. I did a test run of putting the screen up behind the panel and everything looked pretty good as you can see here. So um, how I fit the screen in here is I did an outline to make sure that the rabbiting bit over at the router table was, would work. Uh, so then I took it back over using the same quarter inch rabbiting bit. Um, just put a rabbit on the inside of this groove or up on the inside of this panel. Um, I had to square out the edges using my chisel um, because the screen is square and the router bit leaves rounded edges, or rounded corners, I'm sorry. Um, but after that everything fit really well. I had to make one little notch on the left side for the, uh, the, the cables, but it was nothing too crazy. To stick the cloth to this piece of ply, I'm just using some Super 77 spray adhesive to spray it on both pieces, let it set for a few minutes, and then come back and stick them together. This is some antique radio cloth that I picked up off of Etsy. I'll see if I can find the link and put it in the description below. And to put the, uh, the circuit board on the back of the screen, I just opted to use some double back sticky tape. But later on, uh, I didn't film it, but I ended up using the, um, the hot glue gun to also put the piece of ply on the back of the screen. And as you can see, I'm using the hot glue gun to also put the circuit board to the piece of wood. 
And this little piece here is the touch panel, which is required because it has the cables on it uh, for the TV to work. So I just use some hot glue to, to keep that down as well. With the majority of the components in place, temporarily, um, more on that later, I went ahead and used some brad nails to uh, put the cabinet case together, or at least start to, before putting the sides in the top. I had to take the cloth back off the front panel because I forgot that I had to put a speaker in it. So this is a 2 inch and then a 1 and 3 quarter inch force mill bit to put the hole in it. Uh, so the speaker can set inside of this hole. This is just a little 2 inch speaker that I got out of a, a set of computer speakers. And as you can see I sprayed more Super 77 on it and redid this process but this time including the speaker. I found myself doing this a lot in this project of jumping ahead and then undoing stuff uh, and then redoing it. but. You know, that's just the way it is when you're doing stuff that's custom and you haven't done it before. It's a learning process. One thing that you'll notice on antique TVs is they all have some sort of golden bezel around the screen. So I took some metallic gold paint and a little bit of pitch black paint, uh, just a little bit, to, uh, to give it a sort of a, a, a darker gold color, I guess is what you would call it, um, and painted around all of the exposed plywood edges on the inside of the face and on the back. I thought this worked out pretty well. Um, it just added to the uh, to the appearance of the piece and just made it look like an antique radio or an antique TV. Um, I applied a total of two or three coats of this, just enough until the uh, the layers of the ply was invisible. So now the, what I'm working on is the left, right, and top of the uh, the cabinet box, and this is just some quarter inch plywood that I cut to roughly 11 inches long and seven and three quarter inches wide. Um, roughly those are cut oversized. And this is how I ended up doing the uh, the arch here. Um, I tried kerfing some plywood, but since this is such a tight radius, uh, the kerfing of the plywood just wouldn't work. It was just too tight of a radius, and it ended up breaking. So I just put two pieces, buttered them up, and then scribed a line on what I need to take off the piece. And then I used uh, my block plane to take it down to the actual uh, radius that it needed to be. And then I put them back on the, uh, the cabinet here, and what you're left with is a you know a pretty good curve there's a little gap there um, but it worked out pretty good before nailing the top on I went ahead and got all of the accessories taken care of uh, like this is a power strip that I ended up putting on one of the side panels on the inside so I went ahead and drilled the holes and put the screws in uh, for the mounting screws for this power supply uh, while I had access to everything and I did the same thing for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it only has two holes for the uh, screws. And to hold it into place, I just used some brad nails. Uh, I put the left side on first, and then I put the top panel on, butted it up, uh, marked the right side and cut it into place, and then I put brad nailed that one on, and then I went ahead and did the same thing on the right side and put the whole box together, all three panels on. It worked out pretty good. I was happy with it. And this is me working on the back door. I did put two magnets on this back door because I didn't have, um, I wasn't going to use hinges at the very beginning, but after dealing with the door a little bit, I just realized that hinges would be a whole lot better than a removable door. So I just put some quarter inch, uh, round, eighth inch thick magnets um, on the bottom panel here. And as you can see, I put a little piece of quarter inch ply at the top of the inside of the box on this opening here uh, to put another magnet. And it also acts as a stop. I used a half inch drill bit to drill a pilot hole right there and then I'm using the bandsaw to remove the excess waste. This is the bottom of the door. Uh, this is so the cables can exit the back of the case. Before I apply any veneer to this, I'm going to go ahead and use some 80 grit sandpaper to flush up the surfaces. Uh, that way there's no high levels or, or gaps that the veneer is going to cover and you can see a crease. The way I want to do this is I want the veneer to wrap around. Um, this box so that the grain continues around all the way around the four sides, the bottom, the sides, the sides, and the top. So I've got the piece laid on that side right here and how I'm going to cut this veneer is I'm going to roll it over like this and then when I get to this part right here I'm going to cut it loose because I'm going to veneer the bottom first. So I'm going to do the bottom and then the piece that's left over here is going to wrap around the sides that I just the way in the way that I just flipped this over so the grain will, will match around three sides into the bottom. I'm using a veneer saw to cut these panels loose. 
For this project, I'm using a heat lock veneer glue. Um, this is an iron-on adhesive, so you apply it to both parts, let it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then come back with an iron on a medium to high level, and then you put the veneer over the box, and then iron it on, and it reactivates the glue, and it glues the, the veneer to the box. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is take note of the orientation of this veneer so I don't lose the, uh, the grain wrapping that I wanted to do. And I'm going to apply it with an ink roller, and then when I'm done, I just stick it in this bucket of water right here, um, and I'll reuse it for the rest of the project. I'm going to take some, some masking tape and tape the piece down around the edges. I'm putting the masking tape down because this heat lock glue will cause the veneer to start to curl up, so this just holds it into place. And the good thing about this glue is it dries in about 20 to 30 minutes before you can go ahead and iron it on. All right, I've got the iron on medium to high, and the glue is dried enough for me to go ahead and do this. Press it down on here. Take my time, but keep it moving, and the heat will reactivate the glue and create a bond. You want to start in the middle of, of the piece and work your way out. So now I'm going to take my veneer saw and very carefully trim this veneer. One thing I would like to recommend is to start with a piece that's closer to the size of your box. I went the opposite and had to trim away way too much excess. If I had to do it over, I would start with a smaller piece. So this is the results. It's on there really good. It's nice and flush. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and wrap the rest of the box using the same exact method. To get grain continuation on the back, I put the door into place before ironing on this back panel. Uh, so that way what you're going to see here shortly is this grain continues right into the door um, and, it, and it looks pretty good. So now we start to iron on the veneer uh, for the top of the box and for the tight radiuses I ended up spraying on some of this veneer soft and they recommend if you're going to be ironing it on to uh, have fresh air uh, in the area that you're in because it can be toxic. Just read the instructions on that. Um, and one thing that I totally regret is not making this veneer closer to the actual size. It's way too wide for this um, and I believe that's what caused me to have issues right here on this corner. Um, the veneer ripped when I tried to readjust it and this corner just it just didn't go as planned. Um, just make sure your veneer is closer to the actual size. It'll make things easier. Um, the the left corner, I guess left if you're looking at the screen, my right in the video, went way better than the other corner, than the first corner I did. Um, so I just recommend, I had to put some relief cuts in there to make it easier. Uh, just cut the veneer closer to the size. But other than that, this uh, iron-on veneer it was uh, pretty awesome and it's uh, it's pretty easy to get into. Uh, and it's pretty awesome results. I uh, recommend it. With the front veneer put into place, you'll notice that I had to take the screen and the uh, front cloth back out for the second time, uh, which made it easier to remove this, uh, this excess here. I had access on the inside to trim away the excess. Um, so, and FYI, just leave the screen and stuff out until the last. Uh, and then on the back, I just put some simple, cheap brass hinges on the back door to hold it in. And I have some uh, some brass knobs that I ended up putting on this back door as well. Uh, so I've drilled a half inch hole and I'm just putting it in and holding it into place with some CA glue. And to fix the rip that I was mentioning, I just used some so timber mate in the cherry nice. color to, uh, to hide the rip. It did a really awesome job. So um, it is a little you. noticeable, but it's not too bad. And when the putty dried, I hit the whole box with 120 and then 180 grit sandpaper. Uh, to smooth everything out and to remove the excess putty. And it's probably no surprise for this piece I went with the semi-gloss armor seal. I just wiped it on with a cotton cloth and ended up putting a total of three coats and I sanded in between each coat with 400 grit sandpaper. 
I wanted to spruce the front of the box up, so I bought four antique radio buttons, um, little knobs that were in front of a radio, to add to the front of the case. So I'm marking four spots for the brass dowel rods that I used, uh, and then I just used a quarter inch uh, Forstner bit and drilled quarter inch holes for the uh, the brass rods. Uh, and then to hold them into place, I just simply used some uh, some CA glue. I know I'm showing a quarter inch brass setup block here, but I went back and went with an eighth inch setup block because I thought the buttons were sticking out just a little too far. And finally, uh, I added some brass feet to the bottom of this. Uh, I wanted the cabinet to be a little elevated, uh, and I like the look of the brass feet on it as well. It just blends in with the rest of the brass that's on the box. Um, so I'm drilling five eighths inch holes, and like before, I'm just using the CA glue to hold these little feet into place. And then I flipped the box over with the glue still wet uh, to, to reference the surface of my workbench to make sure that it's flat and it's not going to wobble when it dries. Alright guys, I appreciate you watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the build. Uh, I know that this is probably one of my funnest uh, builds I enjoyed the most. Uh, it's, it's a project that I'm probably going to get a lot of use out of playing the games. And it was fun that I didn't have a set of plans to, to go off of, so I had to think on every step of the process on what I needed to do next. Everything was custom. Um, so, it, you know, it was a lot of fun that I can see myself building these types of projects in the future. I know I have a Bluetooth radio, antique type radio that I'm looking at possibly building. Um, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, be subscribed to the channel uh, and you'll get notified when I release those videos. Um, but this was a blast. When I, what I set out to do was to make a, an antique or retro type tabletop TV, uh, but make an arcade cabinet out of it. So let me know what you think. Do you think I succeeded? Uh, is there anything that you would change? Leave a comment below uh, and let me know. So I appreciate you guys watching. I may do a follow-up video um, talking more about it, uh, maybe critiquing it, saying what I would do different and possibly talking about more of the internal stuff. So if you have questions, leave them below and I'll probably do a follow-up video in the next week or two uh, to talk about this cabinet. If you have any questions about, you know, what type of materials I use for the cloth or how I have the Raspberry Pi set up, what kind of TV this is. And I'm also gonna put links in the description below on where you can pick the TV up, um, possibly the speakers if I can find those. Um, and the Raspberry Pi and the information on how I have the Raspberry Pi set up. I have Retro Pi set up on it but I'll link to some information below on that. Oh, and also where you can pick up a controller. But just give me some feedback, below. let me know what you think of the build. Um, is this the kind of stuff that you guys like seeing? Um, I thought it was a blast. So I appreciate you watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Share this with a friend if you think they would like to see this build. And I'll see you in the next build video. <laughs>